Raise your hand if the texture of your hair is different on different sections of your head. Don't worry, don't worry, for the most part, it's perfectly normal. With natural hair, it feels like you're discovering something new every day. So us starting the conversation on the whys is a closer step to learning more about what makes us so unique. Self-study is the most sincere form of self-love. That's why I love studying our hair so much, because it's the most unique external feature we have, meaning the more you know about it, the more you know about yourself. So in this video, I'm gonna take a deeper look at some theories on why one head of hair can have different textures in different sections. So why do you have different hair textures on your head? One theory has something to do with evolution. Fun fact! Did you know that us humans have around the same number of hair follicles on our entire body as monkeys? Yeah. But according to this lady, over a million years ago, humans in Africa evolved and stopped growing most of their body hair as an adaptation to get rid of body heat more effectively through sweat. So as you can see, as far as body hair, all humans once looked very similar to common day primates. As we evolved and exposed ourselves to the environment more, over thousands and thousands of years, our body and facial hair reduced. At the same time, our skin's pigment darkened to protect us against the sun's rays and our number of sweat glands increased to make us more efficient at releasing body heat. Everyone is a little different, but for the most part, we notice looser textures, thinner hair strands, or less density along the edges, side sections, and sometimes even the lower back section. Our thicker and fuller sections of hair is usually found in the upper back section. We'll talk about the top middle crown section in the next video. Scientific studies on non-vital topics like this tends to be more reactive than proactive. So there's not a lot of information on this. But if you stare at this pattern long enough, it almost looks like the evolution of hair loss is still ongoing. The follicles in these weaker areas are smaller and produce thinner, sparse hair strands. They age faster and tend to grow gray first. Also, male and female pattern baldness affects these weaker areas more dramatically. Evolution works slowly. No real major changes are gonna happen in our lifetime, so you don't have anything to worry about. But how different do you think the world would be if everyone were bald? Another theory for this texture difference has to do with genetic diversity. A study done on mice found that hair strands on different locations can express genes differently. These differences alter each hair type, texture, and thickness. In other words, just because each hair follicle has the same DNA doesn't mean they use the information the same way. Anyone can have multiple textures on their head, but people with closer African lineage more often have the most extreme differences. A 10-year study led by this lady confirmed that Africans are the most genetically diverse race in the world. What that means is that as the oldest humans on earth, we've been adapting, mixing, blending, improving, and adding more diversity to our genetic code for the longest with no interruptions. So our diverse gene pool has the most access to different hair textures, hair colors, skin colors, body shapes, and facial features, just to name a few. And they pop up in all sorts of ways, from our offspring and eye colors to dramatic differences in hair texture on different sections of our head. There are some things you can do to strengthen the weaker hair follicles on your head. I know I sound like a broken record, but your nutritional intake is so important for your overall health 
and especially important for your skin and hair follicles. When you eat, your body prioritizes where to send these nutrients to based on need. So vital things like your organs, tissues, and bones gets the nutrition first. And non-vital things like your hair and nails gets what's left over if it's not all used up. That's why the first thing that weakens when you're unhealthy and nutrient deficient is your hair and the quality of your skin. So if the majority of your diet is nutrient dense foods like vegetables, herbs, and fruits, you'll enrich your blood with more than enough nutrients to feed your hair follicles with everything they need to become stronger. That's another reason why I love studying our hair so much because you can't truly take care of your hair without taking care of your whole body. Blood circulation is also important for strengthening weaker follicles. Faster and stronger circulation means new blood and nutrients are being delivered around the clock to our hair follicles. Today's lifestyle doesn't require us to move around as much as we had to back in the day. So we have to make a more conscious effort to help our blood circulate better. Find ways to move around more. If you're not into formal cardio workouts like running, dancing, or cycling, you can incorporate changes into your lifestyle by taking a walk while you're on the phone with a friend and parking further away in the grocery store parking lot, or you can even try yoga. Inverting your head and massaging your scalp from time to time also helps to rush new blood to your hair follicles. It doesn't work overnight, so make a regimen you know you can keep. Did you know I'm on Instagram? Follow me on Instagram for access to a catalog of quick tips, exclusive Instagram giveaways, and hopefully some natural hair inspiration. As always, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.